For some of you, what I'm about to read you is going to be the most important and impressive and needed thing that you're ever going to need to hear because that's exactly what it did to me a couple of days ago. And I couldn't wait to make this video and share it with you all. There's going to be chapters in this episode, so if you just want to skip to what I'm reading, you can. But you need to know who wrote it for it to have amazing context. Um, it is incredible. The Heiligenstadt Testament. German. If you watched that last episode, what was I talking about? Oh no, it's two episodes ago. What, you sh what should you do with your life? Remember that one? Remember that book I showed you that I bought? Because that's what I want to do with my life. How lucky was I to get that book on Beethoven and come across on page 21 this letter that he wrote to his brother Carl and his brother Johann. And he wrote this letter and I'm going to read it to you and it's going to blow your mind. When I read it, I would, literally after one line, I was like, oh my God. First of all, to read something and the picture of the letter that Beethoven wrote to his brothers is right here in the book there there's a picture of it can you see that okay just scribbles I love and it's from 1802 so when I'm reading I'm like oh my gosh my favorite composer of all time one of the geniuses that's ever walked the earth I'm seeing his very handwriting I'm seeing exactly what he wrote and you and I are going to know exactly what he thought in his very dark moments. I can't wait to read this to you right now. It's a, uh, you know, couple paragraphs, get cozy. But this has completely changed my life. It's completely changed the way, um, anyways, I'll read it to you, then we'll reflect together, and I'd love to see you in the comments uh, to see what you thought of this, okay? So again, this is called, and it's very famous, but I didn't know about it, the Heiligenstadt Testament. Translation of Beethoven's autograph reproduced on page 22 and 23, which is what I just showed you. It is the English translation because obviously he wrote in German. Now, again, this was in 1802. Beethoven was, I believe, my math is right, 32 at the time. Um, so he's writing this as a 32-year-old. So all those people, if you're late 20s, mid 20s, 30s, this is for you too. You're not alone in your thoughts and you'll see why. For my brothers Carl and Johann, and to you as well. What if Beethoven was writing this to you and to me at this exact point in time when we need it? O oh, you men who consider or describe me as quarrelsome, peevish, or misanthropic, how greatly you wrong me. You do not know the secret reason why I seem to you to be so. From my childhood onward, my heart and soul have been filled with tender feelings of goodwill and good deeds. But reflect, for the past six years, I've been in an incurable condition made worse by unreasonable doctors. Yes, people think Beethoven was just deaf at the, at the end of his life. He died at age 56, but here's he's 32 and he's already been having appointments with doctors and he's having um, issues with his hearing and I can read you more about this there's definitely going to be a part two so reflect for the past six years I have been in an incurable condition made worse by unreasonable doctors from year to year I've hoped to be cured but in vain and at last I have been forced to accept the prospect of a permanent infirmity whose cure may perhaps take years or may prove to be quite impossible. Although born with a fiery and lively temperament and even fond of the distractions of society, I soon had to cut myself off and live in solitude. When, occasionally, I decided to ignore my infirmity, ah, how cruelly I was then driven back by the doubly sad experience of my poor hearing. Yet I could not find it in myself to say to people, Speak louder, shout, for I am deaf. Oh, how could I possibly have referred to the weakening of a sense which ought to be more perfectly developed in me than in other people, a sense which I once possessed in the greatest perfection to a degree which certainly few of my professions possess or have ever possessed. 
I cannot do it. So forgive me if you see me withdrawn from your company. Greatly, though, I should like to mix with you. My misfortune afflicts me, as I am bound to be misunderstood. For me, there can be no relaxation in human society, refined conversations, and mutual confidences. I must be entirely alone, and except when the utmost necessity takes me to the threshold of society, I must live like an outcast. If I appear in company, I am overcome with acute anxiety, for fear I am in danger of revealing my condition. Such has been the case the last half year, spent in the country, instructed by my sensible doctor to spare my hearing as much as possible, which is indeed my present inclination. My friends, are you getting where this is going? Are you hearing this from the greatest artist of all time? Outcast of society, shame about his hearing. Even when he goes and sees people, he has this fierce, acute anxiety. Acute means very present, very strong at the moment. Like an acute headache, an acute migraine, an acute episode, right? He feels anxious. He feels shame. He doesn't want to be the guy that says, can you, can you repeat that? Can you say that a little louder? He doesn't want to be that. He feels shame. And just like us, we feel shame. Hey, can you speak a little slower? Hey, can you keep your distance a little bit? Hey, I'm feeling really anxious. Can I have a moment outside? Hey, you know what? I am super, super depressed. I got to go home. I'm not feeling it. If you deal with mental illness, the shame is some of the worst of it. And Beethoven felt the same. Whether physical illness or mental illness, it's a, his physical illness is clearly affecting him emotionally. So let's keep reading. Sometimes I have been driven by my desire to seek the company of other human beings. But what humiliation when someone standing beside me heard a flute from afar off while I heard nothing. Or when someone heard a shepherd singing and again I heard nothing. Such experiences have brought me close to despair and I came near to ending my own life. Only my art held me back. As it seemed to me impossible to leave this world until I've produced everything I feel it has been granted to me to achieve. I'm rereading that one for all of us. You're in no rush, I'm in no rush. Beethoven is speaking to us, my friends. And you'll read and you'll listen to the second paragraph we have here. This is exactly what he wanted. His music, this letter, he wanted to be useful beyond his years that he was here. I'm going to read this again for you because listen, this speaks to me, man. Every line of this when I first read it, and this is only the second time I've read it because I wanted to be fresh for us to listen to. It hits me so hard. This is the human experience. Sometimes I have been driven by my desire to seek the company of other human beings, but what humiliation when someone standing beside me heard a flute from afar when I heard nothing, or when someone heard a shepherd singing and again I heard nothing. Such experiences have brought me close to despair and I came near to ending my own life, but only my art held me back. As it seemed to me impossible to leave this world until I've produced everything I feel it has been granted to me to achieve. So I continue this miserable existence, truly miserable, as my body is so sensitive that my condition can change rapidly from very good to very bad. Oh my goodness, who is hearing this? Comment and you say, that's me. Who, sensitive souls, hello. The last 10 years have been on YouTube. Sensitivity. Working with this sensitivity is what I have to do every day. This is the practice for me. Overwhelm is just over the line. 
the sensitivity is here and he feels it every single day and it can change rapidly just like a mood just like the wind it can just change like that just like it's beautiful right now and I'm on the island here it can start raining just like that out of the blue and our feelings can do that too you can wake up and then in the afternoon, you have some cyclical thoughts, you're beating yourself up, and all of, all of a sudden the mood changes. Or, purely physiological, you just start to feel terrible. You didn't see it coming, and here you are now. But Beethoven says this, right after that, from very good to very bad, patience, that must be my guide, as I am determined and I hope will always remain so, to endure until it pleases the inexorable break to the thread. Perhaps my lot will improve, perhaps not. At the age of 28, I was compelled to become a philosopher. It has not been easy and more difficult for an artist than for everyone else. Of course, what have I said about creativity and the minds of creative people? You look at studies all over the world, the people who are most creative, not just in the fine arts, but those who have ideas, whether it be existential, whether it be in fine arts, they deal with so much more emotional struggle because it brings us into our heads and we analyze and we criticize and we look deep and deep and deep. And what I find myself thinking is I wish I was stupid. I wish I was so dumb I didn't even know what a thought was. I don't know if that even exists, that kind of stupidity, but sometimes I, I definitely wish for it. It has not been easy and more difficult for an artist than for anyone else. Oh God, you look down on my inner soul and know that it is filled with love of humanity and the desire to do good. Oh, my fellow men, when you read this someday, reflect that you have done me wrong and let him who is unfortunate comfort himself with the thought that he has found someone equally unfortunate who, despite all the burdens placed on him by nature, did all which was in his power to earn a place among the worthy artists and human beings. Despite all the burdens placed on you, my friends, by nature, you did all which was in your power to earn a place among all artists and human beings. You, my brother Carl, as soon as I am dead, if, if sorry, Professor Schmidt is still living, ask him in my name to describe my disease and add the paper I've written here to the documents of my illness so that after my death the world will be reconciled with me as far as possible. At the same time I hereby nominate you both as heirs to my little property if it so can be called. Share it honestly, live in harmony and help each other. You know that the harm you did me has long since been forgiven. I thank you brother Carl in particular for the goodness you have shown me of late. My wish is that your lives will be better and less care-laden than mine. Urge your children to follow the path of virtue, as that alone can bring happiness. Money cannot. I speak from experience, as virtue alone has sustained me in misery, and it was thanks to virtue, together with my art, that I did not end my life by committing suicide. It was thanks to virtue, together with my art, that I did not end my life by committing suicide. Notice how it wasn't his emotions that stopped him. It, it wasn't that. It, of course, emotionally and physically, painfully, he wanted to end his life. But by virtue, by being stoic about it and by having faith, seems like he pressed on. Farewell and love one another. I thank all my friends, especially Prince, or sorry, Prince 
Lichinowski, and Professor Schmidt. I wish Prince, Prince's instruments to be kept safely by one of you, but do not make them an occasion for strife between you. As soon as they can serve you in a more useful way, sell them. How happy I shall be if in my grave I can still be of use to you both. And so I, I mentioned that at the beginning, that this is what Beethoven wanted. And I think of all of us, and some of us who, who are, you know, we go through seasons, we have troubles. Some of us, you know, deal with mental illness, mental health challenges, physical challenges. I know some of you have commented about chronic pain and, you know, all of these things. And the reason he's writing this letter, well, one reason is, give this to my doctor. And I hope one day in the future they can use my story and use my tests and use this letter as a cure for deafness in the future. And if anything else, your testament and your life and you living this, what Beethoven calls, continuing his miserable existence, a body so sensitive that my condition can change rapidly from very bad to very good, from very good to very bad. If anything, we live for those in the future, for there to be some kind of cure, some kind of understanding, and that's why I'm doing my master's in neuroscience, to, to be of service the best I can to those who deal with depression, severe anxiety, bipolar disorder, order, schizophrenia, it doesn't matter. Those who want to live a better quality of life and do everything in their power, uh, but it can only get so far. And I hope that we, by, by our testament and by our lives, improve the lives of others. Improve the lives of others. While we're alive, and while we watch and we're passed on. So be it. I go joyfully towards death. If it comes before I have had the chance to develop all my artistic abilities, yeah, right, that will, soon, that will be too soon for me, despite my hard fate, and I would wish it to be postponed. Yet should I not be satisfied, would it not release me from a condition of endless suffering? Come when you will, death. I will meet you resolutely. Farewell, and do not entirely forget me when I am dead. I have deserved to be remembered by you, and I have often thought of you during my lifetime. May you be happy. And now we can talk for about 45 minutes about what was just read. This was absolutely incredible. The second time reading it was just as good as the first time I read it. I think a lot of us who just listened right now can resonate with one of those sentences, if not all of them. Now, here's the deal. And here's the, the, a big message about this. Beethoven, at age 32, was around, what, Symphony 2. And you know he only wrote nine symphonies. But you know, okay, Symphony 1 is insanely good. You know Symphony 6, the Pastoral Symphony, is the one he wrote by being isolated in the country. And look what came to his mind. He literally, my uncle and I were talking, he literally creates the only soul uplifting music. No, sorry, I said only. Honestly, there's, there's few artists and few pieces of music that lift my soul up when I'm down. Music can lift my energy up. Music can lift my emotions up. But the soul? Beethoven grabs it and lifts it up. So he was on his second symphony when he was writing this letter. Excuse me. And he's like, well, shit. I'm going to be deaf in maybe a year. There's no way I'm going to do anything. He writes another seven symphonies. He writes 772 pieces of work in his lifetime. And the best is yet to come because he wrote the sixth symphony. You know he wrote Symphony 9, Ode to Joy, right? But known all around the world as a staple. Symphony number five. Like, 
the suffering, the burdens he held, this miserable existence, out of that, he somehow sprouted the most beautiful, the most beautiful music that was ever created in the history of humankind. This isn't to even mention his, you know, Moonlight Sonata. And in here, by right after this letter, it's saying here, Beethoven's creative achievements, uh, sorry, at precisely the period of this testament, Beethoven's creative achievement, let's try that, I need some cheese. Beethoven's creative achievements soared most steeply upwards. This was the time of the second symphony the three violin sonatas, Opus 30, three piano sonatas, Opus 31, and the violin romances, open, uh, Opus 40 and 50. Unbelievable. When you think you can't keep going, Beethoven saw no future either. He's like, I hope I can get there to release my artistic abilities. But he's thinking, well, I hope you remember me when I'm dead because it would be kind of nice to end this whole suffering thing. And I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed of my deafness and what the hell kind of artist loses his hearing. That's my most important part of my body. It's like, what the heck would I do if I lost my speech? The next seven symphonies, they weren't there. They came later. He couldn't see them. And you can't see your future right now. And if, and if you're down and you're low, I know the future is not there for you. And I know the future you can create within your mind isn't a good one. But that future that you're creating in your mind does not have to be solid and it does not have to come true. And most likely it won't because you're so aware of it. Beethoven's future, I'm sure, was difficult. And I'm going to be reading more and I'm going to be sharing more about this as episodes go on. But as far as the achievements and the lives he changed, and I'm sure the happiness he had in future years, he did not see coming. You do not see the successes that are coming your way sometimes, especially now if you're going through a difficult time, but I promise you they're coming. There's proof all over the place. Have faith. Be a man, a woman of virtue. See your emotions, but don't let them steer the horse. And just keep going. And I can't wait to hear the symphonies you create with your life. Love you all so much. And thanks for allowing me to do what I, actu what I absolutely love, and that's just sharing, <laughs> sharing cool stuff and hopefully helping you uh, through, through another week. Um, you know all the links are in the description, as always. And we're meeting in the month of May, pretty soon, on Patreon for uh, our, our monthly calls. So if you want to join that, I hope to meet you there. Um, and that helps me um, run this channel as you're supporting it. So thank you. God bless and keep writing. Bye-bye.